This is WEWS TV Channel 5, Clement and it's time now for the 6.45 p.m. report. The story is on Wednesday, March 22nd, 1950. Here now, Peter Wiggins. Good evening, everybody. I'm Peter Wiggins. Today is what's happening. A sweeping revision of the Ohio Liquor Administration system featured a single increase cost of $1,000 Sunday sale after 5 p.m. and all night operation of selected bars West FK last night by the Kyoko Tavern Keepers and Liquor Deals Association. The tavern proprietors also denounced slight fines for British liquors and didn't endorse the uncompromising and enforcement policies of Anthony Ritkowski, the state enforcement chief. These proposed changes in a 16-year-old state monopoly setup were offered for consideration by the next general assembly as a means enough then after a curb and after hour and Sunday sales bootleg and whiskey by beer permit holders and all night operation and phony private clubs and cheat spots. The resolution and money and the recommendations was authorized and pushed for the meeting at the hotel. All done by Charles E. Rowe, a proprietor of the world's restaurant and since repeal of power in local and state towers at a state tavern association each proposed change was considered signed and adopted without opposition. Here. Feeling like a brand new person. It's always good to look in the mirror and I like you today. <laughs> the curtain of the 1950 performance of the Great Lake Shipping in which Cleveland plays a principal role is rather rising, but will not reach the top of the stage until mid-April. Most of the city's steamship company officials who have been on vacations in sunny regions have returned to their offices eager to start pulling the strings which keep the steamers powering up and then the late the season. And today, now the limestone and the coal carriers will join the few automobile transports and oil tankers are already creeping by the ice of the lower lakes and delivering the cargoes. Ice in the upper lakes, the Straits of Mackinac and the St. Mary's River, however, is unusually heavy and it will be probably be three weeks before in lake traffic in iron ore and coal begins. Engineers and board and air ships at the lake area to turn up the engineer to the engines and never be sure. The officers and crews will go aboard soon so that everything will be ready to spring rains and sunshine join forces to send the ice in its way sooner than expected. On April 15th, when the regular marine insurance rates become effective, all the 12,000 lake sales will be back on their jobs and the God's willing and another busy shipping season will be started. One moment this season will reach as high as 90 million tons of 140 this event. Others will see a big demand for the mineral in 1950, but who take all rounds must be made for strikes and have extensive place placed a powerful peak movement around 75 million tons. Washington. A battle of the giants holding far reaching possibly for Cleveland natural gas prices and supplies world through the Senate climax yesterday. Terrific heat was generated as Senate debate swirled around a proposal by Senator Robert S. Kerr, millionaire Oklahoma Democratic oil man who sent independent gas producers from federal relations and the Democratic National Committee leaped in the fight when Chairman William and Boyle opened a button all campaign to debate the measure. Senator Robert A. Taft of Ohio, Republican police chief announced that it would vote for the national bill because he said the Natural Gas Act court in Cleveland was never intended to regulate independent producers. Proponents of the current bill contended it would be insured gas consuming cities vast new supplies of natural gas and by encouraging producers to sell it a fair profit to the huge pipeline companies which spread the web like over the nation. Washington. Sweeping charges that President Truman and his administration are sabotaging and nullifying the Taft Turtle Labor Management Relations Act was made today by its co author, Senator Robert A. Taft. So, how Republicans preferred its charges and announcing that he would introduce a resolution in the Senate to veto and recognize plan submitted by the President to abolish the General Council for the Natural Labor Relations Board and transfer all of its duties to the Chairman of the Board. A similar resolution was proposed in the House Committee on Expenditures in the Executive Department today by Representative Ralph E. Church, Republican Illinois, who was stricken with a heart attack while reading an argument against the treatment plan that died almost immediately. He also was have to introduce the tough statement before the House Committee. Governor Lush, the most common photo of political figures in state history has come up with a summary with the plain deal of learn yesterday. He will do no formal campaigning in preparation of a May 2nd primary election. Lush, singing his third jump, the World Cup to term first must win. Democrat nomination in May to qualify in the November runoff election. He is opposed by the primary by Clarence A. Kinsley of Columbus and Joseph Tarako, Youngstown. Tallahassee, Florida. To declare the legislature may take any steps to do moral evil. The state Supreme Court yesterday upheld Florida's law denying race news bias to bookmakers. Attorney General Richard Irvin said the court's anonymous decision strengthens our hands in the fight and the state utility commission has waged all winter to prevent bookmakers from getting racing results quickly. The so-called anti-bookie law was passed by the 1949 legislature after a six-year fight. 
That included two dramatic accusations that have attempted to bring blood like to vote at all. And vote against it. Increase your bleeding risk if you take certain medicines. Tell your doctor about telephones and telegraph companies from furnishing private lease wires for distribution of any information used for gambling, particularly horse racing and information for use of bookmakers. Washington Congress gave President Truman a bill yesterday that there may not be any federal rent control after June 30th. It signed up a money bill which included funds earmarked to pay off the employees in the control agency. The Senate completed its measure of legislative action and a measure of about $73 million to a bill to provide extra money for the various government agencies for the fiscal year ending. In June, the House passed it yesterday, sliced it down by about $20 million in the Senate House conference. Included in the total was $4 million to the Office of Harris and expanded tightly goods on it. A man $2.6 million is to be used only to pay for the terminal leave of employers. The other $1.4 million of operating expenses for which Woods was ask about $3 million. North Dakota State and San Diego State pretty tight. Carlin Dupree with the bucket two of North Dakota State. State trailing by two. Three London. Britain has placed orders for the production of a new type of jet fighter, the Venom Myers. Secretary Arthur Henderson told the NASA committee and the incumbent yesterday. The plane will have a performance exceeding in the British Vampire, a current service fighter on all counts, he said. In Panama, City, Florida, Hellstones flying like machine gun bullets knocked out one of their planes that caused extensive other damage. A tiny Air Force base today and yesterday, two airmen were bruised by hailstones as big as hen eggs. Detroit, 18 people were given hospital treatment last night after coming and knocked that fumes swept over a crowd of nearly 300 bowlers. Four of the injured were rendered unconscious by the fumes. 35 people were affected by the fumes, 11 fainted in the alleys. Most were teenage girls. Assistant Fire Marshal Matthew McNally sent an elbow joint on a gas furnace toll. Was blown out or blown out. The escaping fumes were sucked directly into their deck and spread over the bowling alley. Pittsburgh, a dining car chef on a train from Cleveland was killed and several passengers' equipment were hurt in a switch engine passenger train collision five miles west of Pittsburgh last night, the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Railroad reported. In New York City, New York Central, and affiliate of the P and LE, and divided a dead man at Sea Woods in a Buffalo. Hard pressing chief dispatcher of the railroad said the wreck occurred at the Mickey's Rock Yard, the, the railroad, the PLE train, was number 78, coming in from Detroit and Cleveland. It altered in the yard because of the truck crew working ahead. The switch engine had backed in the rear of the seven car passenger train, Preston said. If you go abroad, be careful where you mail your letters and how many you mail. You may cause your correspondence trouble and embarrassment. You have, may have been embarrassed and so will the post office department. A Cleveland who was in Mexico recently thought it was nice to be a graceful gift to the mail of a letter of thanks to his customers whose orders made this trip possible. As Ernest L. Mauer, chief of Greg Street in the main post office, explained last night the writer picked the wrong place to mail his 246 letters to so many customers. Customers of officials at Laredo, Texas, stamped all the mail, but to contain lottery matter. When the mail arrived in Cleveland, it was not delivered and said the addresses got cut. In order to appear at the post office, they saw the letters opened by custom officials, read and then handed them. What the customs in the post office are now convinced that the letters were innocent, but the ears are red. Mrs. Brennan says, by a clerk to the custom said, we can open any mail from abroad. The letters might have contained linens. I don't know anything about the case, but we can open mail. That's our privilege, so the post office will apologize. The customs will apologize, and the salesman will try to not remember. His customers on his next vacation he does like the idea of being accused of operating a lottery. Get over 3900 total value on this 2014 Buick LaCrosse. Northumberland, Rhode Island. The 50-year-old sesterian monastery, the Our Lady of the Valley, was destroyed by fire tonight. About 150 monks in the clustered order escaped the flames, which left only the walls remaining. Four travelers in the infirmary were carried to safety and then moved to the private homes. Among them were Father Bernard, 86 of Coney Island and Brother Brendan, 70, and Barbara James, 80, a trumpets of more than 50 years. Monks that have come to the order were in the long robes, climbed letters that helped fight the fire. However, the flames quickly went out of control. The monastery buildings were built almost in charge of the monks and main chapel constructed in 1923 and was valued more than $100,000. A number of firemen and monks were almost caught in the debris when the back wall of the abbey collapsed. Tom Edmund or Federer, but an abbot said another five minutes 30 of 15 would have been trapped on the third floor. From 140 to 150 priests and brothers were at the abbey at the time, including 30 guests. 
Just six weeks ago in Mississippi, a jury last night convicted Leon Turner, 38 year old white man in this lane of three Negro children, and Circuit Judge J.P. Coleman sentenced him to life imprisonment. The jury said they were not even able to agree on punishment in such case of life imprisonment and mentoring right under Mississippi state law. The conviction was in the death of one of the three children, four year old Ruby Neal Harris. The verdict read at 10:20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time said we, the jury, find the defendant guilty as charged in the indictment, but this agree on punishment. Judge Coleman and I not said that when the court resumes this morning, which it did at the decision we made on two of her murder and damage. Pending against Turner in the same slains, it was one of the rare instances in which a white man has been a convicted of slaying a Negro in the Mississippi. The jury deliberated about four hours. Last week, when the wit, a 25 year old part time bricklayer, was found out guilty of murder in the massacre, he was sentenced to life imprisonment. The state of Mississippi insists on the death penalty. The district attorney, Henry and Rogers, told the jur Turner jury early today. To advance the prosecution likes to ask the jury to ignore prejudices and passion for its deliberation. Turner was charged in a murder in the jury and pistol slaughter of the Harris Julian, Ruby Neal. Mary Burnside, 8, and Frankie Turman, 12. Thomas Harris, 27-year-old, 10, and Farmer, was wounded. By the defense, a young court appointed attorney, Claude Woodrow, made an impassioned or term. He said, This case that the Yankees aren't so interested in, that's quite the same case that you've heard here in this courtroom. He referred to the widespread public see that the case was received. He did not elaborate on his comments on concerning Yankees. Malcolm Wood, 27, Barber, a Wendell Waits trial. Washington. Cleveland's crime went ranked far down the list of the nation's leading cities last year. The FBI's annual crime report showed yesterday that the city had showed fewer automobile thefts and fewer cases lost in the amounts of over $50 in any of the 10 leading cities. Among the 11 most popular cities in Cleveland ranked 9th in murders, 7 robberies, 9th in assault cases, 9th in burglaries. That's a loss of any about $50. Fourth in the loss of any less than $50 or less than an automobile theft. In Cleveland, the FBI cautioned that the comparison of crime rates in the various cities could lead to erroneous conclusion that because of a variety of factors and not all chargeable to police efficiency. The Bureau in itself has made no comparison, merely listen to all the amount of crime in all cities that have more than 25,000 inhabitants. Okay, let's get on the weather here right now. Our current conditions are. Earlier with Florida clamping down on Pitt, they're a team that likes to go up and down a little bit more. That score was only 6.45 p.m. We worked. It's 39 Cleveland, 37 in Akron, Kenton, 39 in Youngstown, 40 in Erie, 42 in Pittsburgh, 30 in Wheeling, 40 in Morgantown. 40 in Parkersburg, 39 in Columbus, 37 in Dayton, 36 in Cincinnati, 36 in Mansfield, 39 in Detroit, 39 in Ann Arbor, 39 in Toledo, 38 in Finley, 38 in Lima. And snowing, it is raining for much of eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania with western Virginia and West Virginia and stretching in southern Ohio, down through Cincinnati and after Northern Kentucky here. Where about the running nation today? How did he? The part of the close cars dominate most of the country east of Mississippi today. Temperatures were in the 50s, but all of northern New England or upper New York are expected west of the Mississippi and the Pacific Northwest elsewhere in the country. Conditions were close to seasonal levels. So, our forecast it's going to go like this for Cleveland vicinity. Cloudy occasional light rain continue about tonight. And cloudy and cold later tonight. And Thursday, snow flares on Thursday. Expect tonight. Today, 45. Well, tonight, 36 degrees. Washington forecast for Ohio. Cloudy with occasional rain as temperature 45, 50 to north, 50, 55. South portions on Wednesday. Trader cold late Wednesday and Wednesday night. Thursday, continue cloudy and colder. Snow flares likely northeast portions. Set set 6 40 p.m. Moon set 11 p.m. That's me for the WEWS. 6 45 p.m. morning and it's March 26. Second, 1950 on a Wednesday. Peter Wiggins, I'll be a good day. I will see you later. Bye-bye, buddy.